Today, we're looking at this Hisense Smart TV, and we're going to make it even smarter. Here's an overview of what it is. It is a 65-inch TV, quantum LED. It's similar to the one that's by Samsung for half the price. Usually, Samsung quantum LEDs are about uh, 1200 The LG has it also as well, but they're calling it NanoCell. It's basically the same thing, just different marketing. Most people, when they buy a TV, they're looking at the price. And for Hisense TV, $600 for Quantum is pretty good. But most people don't look at the integration. How can this TV be integrated with other devices in the house? How can this be integrated with a hub if such a hub exists in the house? I'm happy to say that this TV works pretty good because it has Roku built in. So here's the TV in the dining room right now. I'm going to assume that you're able to get it onto your Wi-Fi network. Once it's on your Wi-Fi network, go ahead and go into the uh, settings. Go to network, about, and here you can see the IP address, 192.168.1.9. Be sure to go into your router and set this TV up as a static IP address because once it's changed, the integration will be broken. So make sure that it's on an IP address that's static, never changing. Next up, go into the settings and system. Go down to power and here's the trick. When you power it on, it has to go into a certain HDMI. For me, I set up as HDMI 1 and I renamed HDMI as camera. Because for all intent and purposes, this TV is only showing a slideshow. That's why I renamed HDMI 1 to camera. What is camera? Well, it's basically the Libra Blue Potato chip that's playing JPG files on a USB flash drive constantly, non-stop, 24-7. Next up, you want to enable Fast TV Start. I believe this is necessary because it will keep the Wi-Fi connection on, otherwise the Wi-Fi connection will be off and hence your hub can't control the TV whether it's going to be powered up or powered down. So now that you're done with all of these settings, let's go back into the hub. Go down into Settings. In settings, scroll down to integrations. Add integration in the bottom right hand corner and search for Roku. It's going to ask for host, so enter the IP address of your TV. In my case, it's 192.168.1.243. It was .9, but I changed it to 243 static. Click on finish. If you scroll down and go down to the Roku integration, you'll see one device. And here's that one TV that we just added. You can control a bunch of stuff. Volume, volume up, volume down, mute, resume play, power down, power up. It's too bad you can't control TV input. It only displays what input is there. On some TV, like my Samsung TV, it will let you control HDMI input as well. But for this Roku, it's pretty uh, basic. All right, now that you've successfully added the Roku TV into your hub, Home Assistant hub, let's have some fun with it, shall we? So the first thing we're going to do is when there's motion detected in the dining room, the light will turn on. And then three seconds later, the TV will turn on to display the photos. It's loading up the camera, which is HDMI 1, and then the machine is still displaying photos automatically. Pretty cool, right? In the dining room, there's several cameras for um, human detection. It uses the frequent integration for human detection. So if there's no human detected for within 10 minutes, then the lights turn off, and then the TV turns off. So everything will happen in reverse, and this is what it will look like. TV off. Lights off. Alright, hopefully you found this tutorial on how to make your smart TV even smarter. Let me know in the comment section what you plan to use this for. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, and thanks for watching.